as of the making of this video, the Resident Evil 3 Remake has been out for just over a month. I've clocked in about 30 hours in game. I've bought everything from the in-game store, I've completed all the achievements and unlocks, beat it on every difficult setting, and I can honestly say that aside from the hospital horde and one moment on Nightmare and Inferno difficulty, I've fully enjoyed this game. But as much as I enjoyed what I got, as the credits rolled, I did want just a little bit more. Aside from 4, 5 and 6, the Resident Evil games are fairly short once you're on your second run onwards, but with this game I really wish there was just an extra hour or so of content, so in this video I'll be having a look at the map of Raccoon City and trying to piece things together to see where more content could be found, and more content of course means more nemesis. When I first started making this video, EvilResource.com didn't yet have a copy of the RE3 remake maps uploaded, so I set out to make my own. But whilst piecing together my own map, Evil Resource did upload their own, which is what you're seeing on screen now. The map I made includes a portion of the RE2 map, with areas inaccessible in the RE3 remake, which is in green, and I've also expanded the uptown area from the beginning of the game. It's not 100% to scale, but you get the idea. If you were to add content to the game, Uptown would be the primary to do so, as a large portion of it is already in the game's files, it just needs the dots connected and some details adding. Whilst making the map, I did notice a slight oddity however. Once you arrive in the subway, you are free to go back upstairs to a small area where you can find a Mr. Charlie doll. There is a barricade, but on the other side of that is the same area where you first encounter the rocket launcher nemesis, which I thought was pretty cool. But when I was looking at the Uptown map, you can see the RPD at the end of the main street, and after Carlos downs Nemesis with the rocket launcher, you can again see the RPD as they head west. That means that Carlos and Jill must have headed around the west side of the RPD, then east around the back to get to the subway station, instead of just continuing north to the subway entrance on the same street as the toy store. But going back to the expanded map, the Grizzly Bear Games Director's Cut would start off following the same steps as the base game, Jill leaves the subway and heads for the substation. The only difference here is that the path to the gas station is already cleared, but Jill cannot enter yet as the door is changed shut. There is also a warehouse next door, but this requires a lot of pick to enter. So like normal, you put out the fire and reactivate the power of the substation and the nemesis pursuit begins. However, once you make your way back to the subway offices and get the train back online, Carlos radios you to say that upon turning on the power, some fuses in the train blue and need replacing before it can get moving again. There is an electrical goods wholesaler located in Uptown, not far from Jill's apartment. Carlos says him and Tyrell can go instead, but Jill believes the nemesis to be after her in particular and worries that this will endanger the civilians in the subway if she stays there. Using the bolt cutters, Jill can now enter the gas station to find some motor oil, and using her lockpick, she can access the warehouse. Inside the warehouse it is incredibly dark, and there are many zombies to be found amongst the claustrophobic aisles between the tall shelving. If Jill uses too much ammo fighting the nemesis in the downtown area, this area might be difficult. But speaking of the nemesis, thankfully for Jill, he doesn't enter the warehouse. Upon making it to the other side of the warehouse and opening up the shortcut leading back to the back door, Jill finds a generator hooked up to the closed loading bay shutters. Jill must use a motor oil from the gas station on the generator to get the door open. Jill leads through the now open shutters and finds herself in the intersection next to the demolition site. But in my version of events, the sidewalk running down the side of the police station is clear for the player to walk down. Halfway down the street is the Raccoon Press Office. The front doors have been smashed open and a police car has crashed into the front desk. The room is illuminated by the car's blue and red lights. The press office is expanded upon from the original game, with three floors and the basement. The building's architecture and furnishings are similar to that of the RPD, but the second and third floor are partially lit, with some of the lights still working. Jill makes her way through the press office to find a locked door, which would lead to the back alley. She must explore the press office to find the key, but upon reaching the basement printing room, the nemesis smashes through the ceiling and gives chase until the player leaves the building. 
There is also an optional puzzle to access a safe on the third floor. Jill finds a note which contains the combination, but it is partially covered in blood. It is up to the player to figure out the other half of the combination, but once the safe is unlocked, inside the player can find a magnet. Upon exiting the press office, Jill comes out on the same street as the RPD. Across from her is a fire escape that leads between the buildings that leads down to a street behind a multi-story car park where she came so close to being rescued earlier in the night. Upon reaching the bottom of the stairs, the nemesis jumps down from the top floor of the car park and gives pursuit. Jill heads through the car park's back door and makes her way inside. Weaving in between the cars on the first floor, the nemesis hot on her tail. Jill runs through the leaking oil and past the fan that is wired up with spark plugs. Upon reaching the main entrance and heading out onto the street, a fence to Jill's right has now been knocked down which allows her to enter the public market. The nemesis doesn't follow her inside. The only accessible area is the service corridor which leads out into the alley behind Dario's warehouse. If a player didn't shoot the dogs through the fence at the beginning of the game, they will still be here. To Jill's right there is a gate that is locked from the other side for now, but to her left the fence that the dogs were behind earlier is now knocked down which gives her access to Dario's warehouse. Dario's warehouse is now very different to how it was when we first saw it. It is now infested with the same drain demoise like we saw in the power plant. The back door is locked, but the staircase leading to the office is now clear. Inside the office is a safe room, where Jill finds her back door key, as well as a locker with a heavy padlock, but her lockpick won't be able to get this one open. Drain demoise crawl across the office windows waiting for her to come out. Heading back downstairs, more drain demoids burst out of the container Dario hid inside. If the player climbs inside, they can find Dario's corpse and his stash of gunpowder like in the original game. After escaping from a bug infested warehouse, Jill is back onto the main street and crawls under the sign she went under earlier in the night. Jack's bar has zombies inside, but none of them are Brad. Jill wonders if he made it out alive. Back on the main street, the area beyond the fence the zombies knocked down at the beginning of the game cannot be reached as there is now a raging fire. Just past the cinema, a street light that blocked the way before has now fallen down. Beyond it is a gate leading into an alleyway. The gate is tightly bound with a large amount of rope, too much to cut. Jill heads back down the side street but runs past her apartment. The coffee shop is now a roaring inferno, but the liquor store shutter is now open. Inside Jill can find a bottle of strong whiskey before heading out the back door. Jill finds herself in an alley that leads out onto the street where the electronics store can be found, only the doors are heavily barricaded. There is also a fenced parking lot that can be unlocked with her lockpick. One of the parked cars is a large SUV. Further down the street is a small bakery that leads into a back alley. A wall is smashed down revealing a small room with a typewriter, a container and a key that reads Dee's locker. Jill heads back to the alley and locks the gate and heads back to Dario's warehouse. Jill opens the locker in the safe room to reveal the lighter, but this might be just what she needs right now. Heading back to the gate next to the cinema, Jill douses a rope in the whiskey she found and lights it on fire to burn away the heavy rope. Beyond the gate is a ladder up to a fire escape. On the first floor, there is a door that leads into a storage room where Jill can find a fire axe. This could be handy in opening the barricade back at the electronics store. Jill heads back onto the main street, but as she approaches the coffee shop, the police car that's crashed into the front door is violently knocks back into the wall across the street. The nemesis emerges from the burning building. Jill runs for the electronics store, but she won't be able to open the barricade without first stalling the nemesis to buy her time. Jill fights for nemesis, injuring it enough that it falls to its knees to recuperate while she hacks away at the barricade. Inside the store, Jill frantically searches for the shelves for the fuse until she finds it. There is a door to the back alley where she can find a car key next to a body. The key has the same logo as the SUV across the street. Jill heads back outside, the nemesis stalking after her. If the player goes into the parking lot, they can use a key on the SUV to find a stash of ammo and grenades. With the fuse in hand, Jill must now make it back to the subway with the nemesis hot on her tail. 
She makes it all the way back to the multi-story car park, a cutscene triggers where Joel realises she needs to stop the nemesis from following her back to the civilians in the subway. As she passes the leaking oil from earlier, she unplugs the jumper cables from the van and throws them down into the oil, causing an explosion that knocks the nemesis down. Another car explodes into the air and lands on top of the nemesis. Jill makes her way back through the press office and back to the subway. The events of the main game now pick up here, where Jill has to lure the nemesis away and escapes into the sewers. If you've made it this far in the video, I hope you're enjoying my blue sky thinking fanfiction. I'd be curious to hear in the comments any ideas you guys have for extra content that could be found in this game. I'm thinking of making a similar video where I look at how to expand the RPD section as Carlos, so if you'd like to see that, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.